part two of our series on exercises for patellar tendonitis. Um, as I said in part one, I'm going to refer to this as patellar tendinopathy. It's the same thing. Um, it's just different words and terminology, which currently, uh, and this thing sort of changes all the time, is uh, preferred to be referred to as patellar tendinopathy. Uh, if you haven't watched part one yet, please watch that first because it's important to know when to start doing exercises and when not to do exercises that might well aggravate the problem as opposed to get it better. My name's Steph, I'm one of the physios at sportsinjuryphysio.com where you can get an online assessment for your injury and a individualised rehab programme for your injury if you want one. So if you want details on this then please look at our website and the details for the website are in the description for this video. Okay, in this video I will be talking about um, the progressive loading programme for patellar tendinopathy. And now there's lots of different loading programmes for patellar tendinopathy, which is the first thing to mention. Um, you may have heard of or read about heavy slow resistance training, which is um, a commonly prescribed training programme and very successful. There's also uh, previously an eccentric and decline squat program, which is probably used less now than before. Uh, I'm talking about this progressive loading program because there was a nice study done in the British Journal of Sports Medicine earlier this year, which is 2021, um, which compared the progressive loading program that I'm going to talk about with the uh, eccentric program that was done previously. Okay, so the main differences between these two types of exercise are in the progressive loading program, it's really about doing exercise that is not causing pain or not causing further irritation to the tendon. Some of the other programs, so heavy, slow resisted and eccentric, you can get some discomfort in the tendon uh, while you're rehabbing it. And um, while usually this can be okay, sometimes it isn't okay and it just means it's getting overloaded again and will get sore again. So the good thing about the progressive loading program is that it is in your control um, as to what exercises you should be doing at that stage and you only progress when you can do those exercises without pain and at the very most a little bit of discomfort. Um, now, if you haven't seen the previous video, please have a look because you don't want to start doing exercises until you're at the right stage to do it. So if you're not sure, please do ask um, a health professional. And then if it is ready, then the first stage of the progressive loading programme is the isometric exercises, which have been shown to um, reduce pain. And this can be done on a leg press machine if you have access to a gym or it can be on a knee extension machine. But if you're unable to access either of those, you want to be doing the exercises in mid-range, you can start off with two legs and hold for up to 45 seconds. Obviously, you're going within your pain threshold. And then if that's too easy, then you might be doing some single leg holds, for example. It's important that the exercises are progressed at the right time. And this is the sort of thing that we might be able to help guide you on because if you progress them too early you risk overloading things again uh, but likewise if you stay at the same level for too long you might take longer to get better than you really needed to the next phase of a progressive loading program would be isotonic exercises so again if you're in a gym and you have access to kits such as a leg press um, or knee extension you might want to use those if not, you might want to start doing things like split squats or even dynamic walking lunges. Now, these are nice functional exercises for sports such as running. Um, you would then add weight to it after you've progressed a certain amount with your body weight. You want to be progressing the weighted versions to a level that is functional and good for your body weight, which is different for different individuals. Um, and then once you've successfully progressed through the strengthening phase, the isotonic strengthening phase, which means moving up and down, then you can move on to the plyometric and um, jumping phase. Is the jumping phase involves loading the tendon at speed. So it might start off with just some double leg jumps. You might progress to single leg hops. 
You might start to do box jumps on and off a box, for example. You might then progress onto depth jumps off a box, on a box. And this all depends on what sport you're trying to get back to. If you're not trying to get back to a sport that involves running or jumping, then there's really no need to do this side of it. If you are, then you do need to progress through this before doing your return to sport specific training. So finally, once you progress through all these phases successfully with no increase in your pain, um, then you do need to do specific sports training and that will be different for different sports. And again, we can help guide you on this. So for example, if you need to push off of one leg because you play basketball and land from a height, then you'll probably have a much higher load of exercises than someone who wants to return to just um, a 5k jog at an easy pace recreationally or someone who wants to walk um, on hills and things. So this is uh, worth bearing in mind that the last stage is very specific to the individual. Meanwhile, it's important for you to address any other biomechanical issues. And this is, again, something that we can help assess to see what sort of things may have predisposed you to getting a patellar tendon problem in the first place. So it might be that you need to work on your glutes, your core, your balance, address some tightness in your calves, in your hamstrings, in your hips. Um, and this sort of thing probably needs an individual assessment because everybody is different. So some people won't need to work on their core, other people will. Um, and there has been some evidence to show, the, show that a stiff ankle or perhaps weak glutes can contribute to predisposing you to a patellar tendon problem. So in this study um, from 2021, they compared this progressive loading program with the eccentric loading program. At 12 weeks, they saw that both groups had improved. So they had two groups, one group doing the progressive loading, the other doing eccentric. Both had improved in symptoms by 12 weeks. By 24 weeks, however, the people in the progressive loading program had a higher percentage of people returning to sport and also a greater improvement in their symptoms. Um, if you're shocked by the sound of 24 weeks, which is you know, pushing half a year, uh, that is a common time scale for tendon recovery. Um, so I, I think it's important you manage your expectations with that. Obviously, the sooner you deal with a problem, the, the shorter the time it takes to get it better. Um, but yeah, I think this is the, the pros of the progressive loading program are that it takes into account people's individual differences. You work within a comfortable zone, so you're not pushing it through pain and therefore you're less likely to overload it. Um, and this is just one of the approaches for uh, rehabbing a patellar tendon. In my further part three and part four videos, I'll be talking about the heavy slow resisted programs and the eccentric programs so that you can get an idea of what this means and see the differences between them. I hope you found this useful and uh, good luck with your injury. Please do get in touch if you want further information or you want us to take a look. Mm -hmm.